I want to do an example of a detailed graphing problem, in particular one where I have a rational function. Now I've gone ahead and taken both the first derivative and second derivative just to speed things up for us a little bit. Now when we're asked in calculus to do a detailed sketch, there's usually a long list of things that we need to make sure to take care of. And I like to start with the ones that really are pre-calculus skills. So I'm going to start by looking for x and y intercepts and to check for both vertical and horizontal asymptotes because we do have a rational function. Y-intercepts happen whenever we set x equal to 0. So in this case, if I plug in 0 for x, I've got 0 divided by negative 2 or 0. So my y-intercept is going to be x equals 0, y equals 0. For my x-intercepts, those are happening when y is equal to 0. And if I set y equal to 0, now I'm looking at x squared over x minus 2. Well, one trick with rational functions, if the bottom is 0, that's not an intercept. That's actually telling us to look for a vertical asymptote. So I really only have to pay attention to the numerator. And there's only one way that that's 0, when x is 0. So I'm actually getting the same intercept. Speaking of vertical asymptotes, I know the candidates for my vertical asymptotes are any number that makes my denominator zero. And to verify that it's a vertical asymptote, I'm going to want to make sure that we take the limit and show that we either get a positive infinity or negative infinity. So if I take the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared over x minus 2, when we plug that 2 in, we get 4 divided by 0. Well, that's an indeterminate form, but we know that if I have 4 and I'm dividing that by a smaller and smaller and smaller number, the result is going to get larger and larger and larger. So this is, in fact, telling me that we have a vertical asymptote. And whenever we get a number divided by 0 for that limit, that's our clue. Yep, that was a vertical asymptote. We should put that on our graph. The next thing I'm going to look for is horizontal asymptotes. And I'm always finding those the same way, by taking the limit as x approaches positive and negative infinity. Sometimes we can do both at once. Sometimes if we've got square roots, we're going to have to check the positive infinity and negative infinity sides separately. Well, if I plug infinity in, I get infinity divided by infinity, which is another one of those indeterminate forms. But infinity over infinity is telling me to go do some algebra. And in this case, the algebra I want to do is to divide everything by the largest power of x in the denominator. So I am instead going to look at the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity of x squared over x, x over x, and 2 over x. Now doing this means that in my numerator, x squared over x ends up being infinity. But in the denominator, x over x is a 1. And in the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 over x, this is going to 0, which means overall this is headed to infinity. And if I looked at the negative side, if I plug in a negative infinity, then when we simplified the top, that x squared over x, which just became a single x, if x is approaching negative infinity, then I would be approaching negative infinity for our final limit there. So I started out thinking I was going to be able to do them together, but in fact, I'm not able to because this one is headed to negative infinity. Well, that's about as far as we can get using those pre-calc skills. Um, and not everybody sees limits in pre-calc, so don't worry about that. But that's enough to get a rough sketch of my graph going. So we know we've got an intercept at 0, 0. We know that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And we know that we do not have a horizontal asymptote. But as x approaches positive infinity, we should be heading up to positive infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, we should be doing something that heads down to negative infinity. Now we're ready to use our calculus skills going to erase these limits. So next I'm going to take advantage of those first and second derivatives to give me a sense of the shape of the graph, where we're increasing, where we're decreasing, concave up, concave down. Looking at that first derivative, I'm going to go ahead and get a number line going. 
And I'm going to put any numbers, any critical numbers on my number line that either make the function zero or undefined. So looking at this f prime here, if x were zero or four, then the derivative would be zero. And if x is two, the function, the derivative of the function is undefined. So I need zero, two, and four on my graph. Now, I like to remind myself that two is a vertical asymptote by actually showing that on my number line also, so that I don't end up thinking that it might have been um, a relative maximum or minimum. Next thing, I'm going to check in on some test points. So if I pick something in here like x equals 1, and I plug that into my first derivative, again, I only care if this is going to be a positive or negative, because I'm just looking for whether we're going up or down. So if I plug in 1, that's a positive times a negative over a positive. Overall, I've got a negative number, which means my function should be decreasing. Now I'm going to trust that you could fill in and plug in the rest of these test points for me. And I'm going to hit the fast forward button and just fill in the signs. So I am looking at a negative and a positive over here and a positive over here. So that means that when I'm sketching the graph, I know that I'm looking at a relative maximum at zero. And because we're going down and then back up, a relative minimum at four. And again, if you were doing this on your own, you're going to want to plug each of these numbers into the first derivative to get those signs the way that I did. That's actually enough for us to finish our graph. So I know that I should be increasing until I hit zero and then decreasing from there to two. Since two is that vertical asymptote, I know my function's got to come up to hit zero, but then decrease down to that asymptote. Now, on the other side of my asymptote, this shows that I should also be decreasing until I get to an x value of four. Well, if that's two, then we'll give ourselves a little bit more space out here. Four is somewhere over here. So I have to be decreasing to get to four, which means I have to be coming from this side on that vertical asymptote. Now, when we get down to an x value of four, we're going to turn around and start going up again. Now, one important thing to note here is we only had one x intercept at zero, zero, which means this has to turn around before it hits the x axis. So four is going to be that minimum, but I'm going to turn around before we hit the x axis. And that's basically what our sketch should look like. Just to confirm that we've got our concavities correct on this, we're going to want to look at a number line for that second derivative. So if I do the same kind of thing here, but I line up my second derivative, then again, I'm looking for anything that makes my second derivative zero or undefined. Well, it's not going to be zero. There's no way to make the numerator equal to zero, but it is undefined at two. So again, here's my two and my vertical asymptote. And then I want to do the same thing and test some points on either side of that, plugging them into the second derivative. So let's say I plugged in 0 for x. Well, negative 2 cubed is negative. 8 over a negative number, that's negative. We should be concave down. That matches our graph. Good for us. Over here, we're expecting to be concave up. So let's make sure that matches with the numbers. If I pick a number bigger than 2, let's say 3, to plug in, 3 minus 2 is positive, cube that, it's still positive, 8 over a positive number, and we can make that concave up, also matches this. By the way, 2 is not an inflection point. It can't be an inflection point because it's a vertical asymptote, and point implies that there is a point on the graph there, meaning if we tried to plug in the x value of 2, we should get a y value back if it's an inflection point, and we don't because it's not in the domain. So that's my complete graph for this.